Good day everybody and welcome to Rise, Wine and Dine. Today on our show we're so excited about a special recipe. It's called Springtime Shortbread and this recipe I have been making for so many people now. I don't want to give away my age but I have been making this recipe since I've I was about 14, 15 when I started making this recipe. And this is my whip shortbread, but I'm gonna call it today springtime shortbread. We're about a week ahead of spring and I'm so excited. We actually have a snowstorm going on outside, but I'm so excited because we are preparing for spring. Spring is about to come, like within a week. I am personally so excited to share this recipe with you all. This has been a secret recipe of mine. I know a lot of people do shortbread, but this for me is my secret recipe and I am finally letting it out. It's coming to YouTube and everybody can have full access to it. I want to be able to share it with you. So there are a couple tips and tricks with this recipe and I'm gonna share it with you as we go. So the ingredients we're going to need to do are our whipped shortbread, which is springtime shortbread today, is butter. Your butter has to be at room temperature in order for it to get the right consistency and for your shortbread to turn out. So it's definitely at room temperature and we are going to whip this until it turns white. That's the secret with the butter in this recipe. You're going to whip it that much because you want it to become really white. You want that really, really creamy texture and that's how you're going to get this amazing amazing shortbread everybody for the past so many years quite a while have been always saying to me I love your shortbreads what what is the trick with this shortbread and I wouldn't reveal it until today so count your lucky stars you're getting my recipe so we're gonna whip the butter until it turns white that's the first tip and trick in this recipe then we're gonna use vanilla and then we're gonna use icing sugar these are both icing sugar we're going to use cornstarch, flour, and non perials So I'm going to start to cream my butter. And when it's done perfectly towards the end, we're going to come back and show you the different color and how it looks. And what we're looking for, what you're going to look for at the end of creaming the butter. So this is the exact consistency. It may not be a, an actual white, but this is the exact consistency you're going to look for when doing my shortbread, my recipe. See how much lighter the color is as opposed to when we first started, right? It's a really light, light yellow and look how creamy, just look. Look, this is what you're looking for. You see this? This is the gear. So at this point right now, we have our butter all creamed very, very well. It's very, very, such a, you know, such a smooth consistency, right? We can see this, okay? So right now we're going to put in our vanilla. You can just stir this in by hand, that's fine. You can go back to your beater and incorporate it with your beater if you want, that's fine. But you can also do it by hand. You see it's getting blended there, right? And scraping down your bowl three or four times as you cream your butter is a really good idea. Because you want to make sure you're getting every bit of the butter. It's just being neat and particular and making sure you're getting all ingredients well combined anyways. Just very smart thing to do in my opinion. We're just going to place this to the side and right now we're going to put all of our dry ingredients into another bowl, another large bowl and then once we get all the dry ingredients in there in this bowl we're going to just whisk the dry ingredients all together to get them all very well combined. Then we're going to take our dry ingredients slowly and put them over into our butter mixture. So right now we'll take our flour and we'll just we'll just dump in our flour, our cornstarch, ice 
mixing sugar all all of our icing sugar so at this point we're going to take all of our dry ingredients and we're just going to whisk them together to make sure we get them all very well blended this is how this is another one of my tricks to do my shortbread mix all your dry ingredients really well Every single person that you are going to give this recipe to or you are going to get them to try, they are just going to love this recipe. They're going to ask you, where'd you get your recipe? And I hope you say to them, rise, wine, and die. Get everybody to check out this video. It just, it's such a cookie. It's such a beautiful cookie. It just melts right in your mouth. It's like a piece of heaven. You're going to see when you taste it how good this is. So at this point we have two bowls. We have our butter in one bowl and we have our flour mixture into the other bowl. At this point what you can do is you can put in like a third of your flour mixture over into your butter and then you can either beat it with your hand mixer or a stand mixer or you can even do it by hand. So just take a third, go into your butter, a third in your butter, a third in your butter. Mix it, mix it, mix it. Scrape down your bowl lots of times in between. And in the end, you're going to have such a smooth batter. You're just going to say thank you. That's all I can say. You're just going to say thank you. So I'm going to do this by hand today. I'm just going to put in about a third. So we'll set our flour aside. So you just start to, you can fold it, you might want to work slow, and you just scrape down your bowl as you're going. You see how creamy this still is, look at this, you see this? You have to see it to appreciate it. You have to taste it to appreciate it. Seriously. So when I'm done with all of my flour mixture and it's all over into my butter, we will come back and show you the end result on how the whole batter will look. Can you see the inside of my bowl? Do you see this dough? This is what you're looking for when you're done with your batter. It, my hands are so clean, trust me. Take off about little inch balls off the dough, like this. Place onto your sheet. So just with the palm of your hand, just flatten it out, flatten out your dough until you have a cookie that looks like this. So we'll do another one. You roll it in a ball, get a nice ball. And you just pat it out. Try to go in a circular motion too as you're patting it out. It's two. Patting it out again. So I'm gonna continue with my two baking sheets and when I'm done, I'll come back and show you how they look. As you can see now, we have our 24 Shortbread, our whipped shortbread is ready to go in the oven almost. And we still have dough left in our bowl. This is about half the batter here now. So in my opinion, you can get four dozen shortbread out of this recipe. So we're just gonna place our dough over to the side. And right now, we're going to just put on some non perials on top of each cookie and when you put them on top just start to press them down so the ones that fall off you can just pick up with a little bit of grease on your finger like so and put them back on to your cookies that's if you don't want to lose any of your little candies see that I'm going to continue putting on my non perials and I will come back when I'm done and show you how they look. 
So we have our cookies laced with our non perials and they just look absolutely springtime beautiful. They're so scrumptious looking already. So we're just going to pop one sheet at a time into our preheated oven on 350 degrees for 7 to 10 minutes. And when they come out, we'll show you how they look. And you don't want to overbake these. Be tender and not dry it out. So when we have our cookies come out of the oven, we'll come back and show you how they look. Another one of our tricks here doing this recipe today, the whipped shortbread which is also known as springtime shortbread. Take the grease from your hands after you roll each ball and you pat it out with the palm of your hand. Take your forefinger or your middle finger, whatever, and just go down in your non perials and you'll attach them on, obviously. And instead of having extra wastage all over your parchment sheet, just pat it right on onto your cookie. You're here, you're supposed to have a, have a little bit of fun doing this, and fun you shall have. That's right. Aren't they just the cutest? And when we have them all out of the oven, we will come back and show you how they look. My whipped shortbread, springtime shortbread, is out of the oven and they are just phenomenal. So I put them in there on a preheated oven, 350 degrees for seven minutes. And the bottoms of mine turn out just like this. This is heaven. Any child, any teenager, any middle-aged person, any senior person, anybody is just going to love these cookies. That's my opinion because they're so, they just, they just melt in your mouth. Just gonna break it in half and voila. So I like to bake them for seven minutes on 350 degrees and when you pop them in your mouth, they just melt. Look, it just broke. You chew it, as you're chewing, it just melts. And especially with just five ingredients, this could be a sweet cookie for anybody. Mm hmm Absolutely yummy. So if you're looking for a special shortbread cookie, a springtime shortbread cookie, something that's just going to melt in your mouth, this is your recipe. Don't even bother looking any further. It is awesome. The colors are so cute. So anyway, we hope you and your family will check out this recipe, give it a go, and tell me in the comments below if you liked the recipe. And the recipe will turn out like this if you do the steps like I just showed you. So if you like our videos here on Rise, Wine, and Dine, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe in order for you not to miss out on any of our recipes. We'll catch you right here next time on Rise, Wine, and Dine. Heaven. Mm-hmm.